name is Mark Miller. I'm the owner of Sound Theory Studio. And I just wanted to make kind of an intro video for you, talk a little bit about myself, about the studio, uh, about the guitar, about taking guitar lessons, about why you should have a guitar teacher, and uh, all kinds of things, just to get you kind of an introduction to the, uh, the whole process. So um, let me just start by telling you a little bit about myself. I started playing guitar coming up on 20 years ago. Um, it changed my life. I uh, wasn't really sure what I wanted out of life. I didn't know what kind of career I wanted. I didn't really know a whole lot at that point. I was 18. And the uh, first time I played a guitar, I was hooked. That was it. I loved it. I loved how it sounded. I loved how it was a challenge, but it wasn't impossible. And I wasn't sure that I could do it, but I found that, you know, there's a lot of songs that are actually pretty easy for a beginner. And so I learned a few things, and the next thing you know, I'm playing all day, every day, it seemed like. And uh, it's probably the best decision I ever made in my life was to learn to play guitar. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that can tell you the same thing, and there, there's a reason for that. The guitar, it's really the best instrument in the world. It's beautiful. It sounds beautiful. It's a lot of fun to play. It's very expressive. And uh, one thing you might have heard in the past is, is and if you, if you know any guitar players, or if you're a guitar player yourself and you have been playing for a while, one thing that, uh, that you've come across, I'm sure, is the way that guitarists think of their guitars. I mean, this isn't just a piece of wood with metal strings on it. This is like a friend to people who play guitar. Um, you may have heard the story of B.B. King running into a bar that's on fire to get his guitar. And, uh, you know, to someone who doesn't play, that might sound kind of ridiculous, but you come to realize after you play for a while that this, this becomes a part of you, and it's, uh, it means so much to you and becomes so important in your life that, that's, that that gets to the point where you feel that way about it. And it's, it's probably the most positive, creative hobby you could take on. Um, I mean, you know, I have a lot of hobbies other than guitar, but there's nothing I'm nearly as passionate about as guitar. I mean, I'm not going to run into a burning building to save my PlayStation 4, right? But if my guitar is in a burning building, I might. And that tells you a lot about just how much people care about music once they get involved in it and how much it starts to mean to them. And if you've played guitar for a while, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you're new to guitar, well, then uh, you'll find out if you start playing, and uh, you'll likely fall in love with it, and uh, it'll become a big part of your life. So learning to play guitar is a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great way to spend your time. It's very constructive and positive, and uh, it'll be a decision that you'll, you'll uh, be happy that you made, uh, likely for the rest of your life. It's, it's, that's what's really great about it. It's not something you do for a year or two, and then you're done. It's something you do your whole life, and it always brings you enjoyment from this day until your last day. Uh, one of the great things about playing music. So um, that's a little bit about the guitar. Now, about me, I've been playing guitar for coming up on 20 years now. I started when I was 18, and I'm uh, 37 now. And uh, it certainly changed my life. I remember the first time I played a guitar, I was a freshman in college, and uh, just fell in love with it instantly. I mean, the, the first time someone showed me how to play a note, just... And then a chord. I just thought that was the most beautiful sound, and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I convinced myself that I, that I, I always liked guitar, but I didn't think I could do it. I had kind of convinced myself that this is something that, you know gifted people do and, and people who are naturally musical and you have to start when you're a kid and things like that. So I never really got around to trying it. But when I was in college, there was a guy who had a guitar and, and I got to try it and I fell in love with it instantly and I never looked back. I started playing for hours every day and the uh, greatest decision I ever made was to take on the guitar. Um, and that's one thing I'd like to talk to you about too is that there's a lot of myths about playing guitar that I'd like to uh, to get out of your mind now 
and they're popular myths. And, and in some cases, I don't know where they came from, but they seem to be widespread and a lot of people believe them. And probably the biggest one, and I hear it all the time, is that you have to start when you're young or you can't do it. And that's just simply not true, not true at all. I mean, there are there is some truth in the fact that, you know, if you the younger you start, the more time you have to get better and better at it. I suppose that's true. That's just logical. But it certainly doesn't mean that someone who's older can't play. I mean, it's great to start as a kid. And if, if you're thinking about getting your child lessons, it's a great idea. And, uh, you know, it really can form a path in their life that'll be really, really positive. But even if you're, you know, 50s, 60s, you know, even 70s, I mean, there's really no age limit on this at all. Yes, it takes a lifetime to master the guitar. But one of the nice things about the guitar is that it's one of the easiest instruments to learn. And that's, uh, I can't remember who said that, but it's one of my favorite sayings about the guitar is that it's one of the easiest instruments to learn, but one of the hardest to master. And what, what they mean by that is... It doesn't take much to learn a few chords. You just memorize the shapes and, and take a little time getting you know good at playing them. Take a couple of weeks, maybe a month, not very much time. But as soon as you get just a few basic chords down, you can start playing all kinds of songs. And uh, that's the beautiful thing about guitar is that it doesn't take long at all to get into it. Just a few weeks, really, and you're playing songs and... Uh, you're having a great time, and you can, you know, go to the, you know, in front of the campfire and strum a few songs and play with your friends. If you have any guitar player friends, you can start playing with them. It doesn't take long. Uh, so it's one of the easiest instruments to get into. But what's cool is that it's since it's one of the hardest to master, that may sound intimidating, but it's actually a really good thing. Because what it means is you can jump in easily and get right get started right away, but then you have a lifetime of challenge ahead of you. And entertainment and it's it's not the kind of challenge that is a bad thing it's the kind of challenge that's a good thing it's the kind of challenge that keeps you motivated and keeps you interested and it never gets old it's always something new to learn there's always something new to master a new technique another song to learn uh, learn more about music theory it never ends and and that's a good thing I try to explain it to people like you know imagine the best book you've ever read or the best movie you've ever seen and it never ends and that's good because you don't want it to right so just imagine you know you're, you're watching a you know a, a movie that's really inspiring to you and you love every minute of it and you love the characters and you love everything about it and you can sense it's about to end and you have that feeling like i don't want this to end this is great well the, that's kind of the way the guitar is and it never ends and it's just, it's fun for years and years and years and years, your whole life. It never ends. And it's, uh, it's one of the reasons it's one of the greatest hobbies I think you can take on. Because, you know, a lot of hobbies you do, you do for two or three years and you might get kind of sick of it and you move on or you've kind of done all there is to do. But the nice thing about music is it really is a never ending journey and it's not about the end of the journey. It's not about the goal. It, it really is about the journey and how much fun the journey is. And you're always being rewarded because you're always getting better from day to day, week to week, month to month. Your progress is is right in front of you and it's clear to see so long as you practice consistently. And you're always getting better and always getting better. And that motivates you to keep practicing and to keep getting better. And then that motivates you to keep practicing and keep getting better. And uh, it's it's just it's a lot of great fun. And uh, it's 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 a wonderful hobby. Can't really stress that enough. Um so I started at 18 and then uh, finally decided I wanted a formal education in music and uh, my education is from Berkeley College of Music. And um, that was, those classes were a great experience and uh, I learned an awful lot about music. And one thing I think that you should, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a guitar teacher, it's really important that you find someone that has that formal education. Um, there's a lot of guitar players out there that teach and uh, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from them. They, they might be great teachers and, and, and great guitarists, but there's something to be said for that formal education. It's, it's a structured routine that you're put through and it makes you so much better and it makes you understand music so much better. 
And uh, I really think it's important that any teacher has at least some sort of formal education. And it's something that you should keep an eye out for when you're choosing a teacher. And like I said, mine comes from Berkeley College of Music. Great experience. Learned a lot. Made me a vastly better teacher going through those classes. Um, another thing I'd like to say about looking for a guitar teacher and finding the right one is a lot of people, I think, look for someone who's a great guitarist, which is fine. You do want your teacher to be a great guitarist, but that's not the end all be all of being a good teacher, right? Just because someone's good at guitar doesn't mean they're a good teacher at all. They could be a terrible teacher, but an amazing guitar player. And uh, that's something you really need to watch out for is uh, you want to, you want a teacher who's a good teacher at the end of the day. That's very important. And of course, they need to be really skilled at their instrument as well, so they know what they're talking about. But being a good teacher is a huge deal. And uh, that's part of the reason why I'm making this video, and I've made other videos that you can view on the website for free, uh, sample lessons and things like that, because I would like for you to be able to watch my lessons, uh, learn a few things from me online, and uh, just kind of see my teaching style, how I talk to people, how I communicate. Um, that should tell you quite a bit about how I teach. And regardless of whether you teach, you know, you pick me or any other teacher, you should be uh, very particular about how they communicate. Um, there's a lot of teachers I've met out there that were pretty phenomenal guitar players, but not very good teachers. And if you're going to be taking on uh, guitar and taking lessons and learning these concepts that can be pretty challenging and pretty complex, um, you want to learn it from someone who communicates well with you and uh, communicates in a style that you can understand and appreciate. So keep that in mind when looking for a teacher. And uh, like I said, I have a lot of free video lessons on the website that you can view to see my style and see if it uh, works for you. So I highly recommend doing that. Um, now let's talk a little bit about, I'm going to assume now that you are new to guitar or your child is new to guitar and uh, you've never played really. And one thing I get asked a lot is, how do you choose your first guitar? And it's a great question. And, uh, you know, what kind of guitar should you get? Um, how much should you spend? Uh, how much should you expect to spend? So on and so forth. So it's a really good question. One thing I'd like to say, and it's another myth that I'd like to bust, is uh, for some reason, and this is another one, I don't know where it started, but people... And I've heard this hundreds of times. They think you have to get an acoustic guitar. Everyone starts with an acoustic guitar. And I've had so many students come in with acoustic guitars just for me to find out that what they really want to play is an electric. And I'll ask them, you know, why did you get an acoustic guitar if your passion is the electric guitar? And then I've heard it so many times. They say, well, I've always heard you have to start with an acoustic. And I'm not sure where that comes from, but it's widespread. And I'm telling you, it's, it's not the case. Uh, if you want to play acoustic guitar, then yeah, buy an acoustic guitar. But if you want to be a classical musician, buy a classical guitar. If you want to play rock on an electric guitar, you need to buy an electric guitar. Um, so think about, and what I always ask people, if they're not sure what they want to start, is I just, you know, kind of close your eyes and picture yourself on stage someday, playing guitar, sounding great, and ask yourself, you know, what do you see in your hands for a guitar? Is it an electric? Is it an acoustic? What kind of music are you playing in this fantasy? And if what you see is an electric guitar, then go out and buy an electric guitar. If what you see is an acoustic, buy an acoustic. If what you see is a classical guitar, then buy a classical guitar. Um, I don't see any reason to buy an acoustic if you want an electric or vice versa. Um, they're different instruments. The nuts and bolts are kind of the same. And they're played in a similar way, but there are a lot of differences there. And uh, you want to get started on the one that you're most passionate about. Now, there's no there's no harm in learning all three. I mean, that's what I did. I I wanted to be well rounded and and know how to play all three. But when you're first starting, I think you should choose which one you're most passionate about and just go with that. Now, um, now with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about cost and what you should buy and what you should look for. Um, Buying your first guitar is a huge decision, and it's an important one. And one thing to keep in mind is your budget. 
and how serious you are about it. Um, I have people come in to learn with many different kinds of goals. If your goal is to be a virtuoso and you plan to play six hours a day, I think you should spend a little more on your guitar and get something that is going to be worth your while and a quality instrument right from the get-go. I don't think there's any harm in that, especially if you're really confident you're going to put that kind of time into it. If you're not sure or if you're going to get your child lessons and you're not sure if they're going to stick with it, I can understand not wanting to spend a whole lot. So let's talk a minute just about uh, buying a guitar and how much it's going to cost. Um, there's kind of a, a, a level that I found, and there's exceptions, of course. But there's, it seems to me like there's a pretty big jump in quality for guitars over $500 and under $500. Um, and of course, guitars range up into thousands of dollars. But let's just talk about that kind of entry level instrument. If you're buying something for yourself or your child and you're not totally sure about uh, playing guitar or if you're not, uh, not entirely convinced it's something you'll stick with and you just want to try it out, there's no harm in getting a cheaper guitar. Um, what I would recommend though is when you go to the music store to buy one, you have them play, someone, someone there who's a guitar player, have them play the instrument for you so you can listen to it because some cheap guitars sound pretty bad but some sound pretty good. Uh, so, you know, let them help you pick out one and make sure they play it for you and, and you can listen to it. And uh, if it sounds really good and, and everything sounds nice, then it's probably going to be a pretty good instrument. Uh, you know, if it sounds kind of buzzy and, 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 you know, not very good, then it's just a cheap one and you should stay away from it. Um, and that's a really important thing to consider, especially if you're buying for a child or for yourself. You don't want to spend so little that the guitar is really hard to play. One thing about cheap guitars is not only do they not sound all that good, but a lot of times they're really hard to play. And uh, the reason for that is maybe kind of hard to understand for someone who hasn't played, but it's just harder to hold the strings down sometimes. It's harder to get a good sound out of it. It's hard to play a chord and have it sound any good. And as you can imagine, it's very discouraging to start playing guitar and even if you're doing everything right, it still sounds bad because your guitar is no good. Talk about discouraging. I mean, that's, that's a really good way to give up on guitar, is no matter how hard you try, it just doesn't sound any good. So make sure you're not getting something so cheap and you know old or used and damaged or anything like that, that it doesn't sound any good. Because it really defeats the whole purpose. And how can you learn if it, you never sound good no matter how hard you try, right? Now, on the other hand, there's no reason to spend a ton of money either. So... I would look for something in the range of $300 up to eight or 900 if you have that kind of budget. Now, like I said, there's a pretty big jump in quality around $500. So if it's something you're really serious about and you, and you really want to get into it, I would go ahead and spend over 500 and get something quality. The reason for that is because I remember I started on a pretty cheap guitar. And what I ended up doing is as I got better, I would buy a slightly better guitar. So I'd have a guitar at this level, and then I'd spend a little more and get one at this level, and then a little more, and then a little more. I probably went through like 10 different guitars. And in hindsight, I should have just got a nice one to begin with and saved all that money. Uh, because I knew that I loved playing, and I knew that I wasn't going to stop. So all these little increments of good quality guitars I got going up and up and up were kind of a waste of money in hindsight. I should have just got a nice one to begin with. Um, so if you feel that way about it, I would recommend getting something, you know, between $500 and $1,000 to start. It'll last you several years. You may eventually decide to upgrade it to something nicer, but it'll last quite a long time. Um, and then if you're, if you're not so sure or if it's for a child and you're not sure about that, it's okay to spend under $500. Uh, just make sure that you listen to someone play it and that it's a quality instrument. And uh, you might want to stay away from something used because you never know if there's damage to it. If the neck is warped, things like that, it's hard to tell if you don't play guitar. You can't really look at it and see it very clearly. Uh, so anyway, just a few things to keep in mind. Now, as far as picking a guitar amplifier, if you play electric, you need an amp. Now, basically what a guitar amplifier does, it's, it's basically a speaker. You plug the guitar into it, and then you can hear it. Without the amp, all you can hear is that. You can just kind of hear the dead strings. It doesn't really make any noise, but you plug it into an amp. Now it sounds like your guitar, right? Now the good news about buying an amp is that it's quite cheap. Uh, 
you, you get a practice amp is what they're called a practice amp. And, uh, you know, you can expect to spend around $50 for one up to a hundred, maybe, uh, it's not, it's not a big investment and they last for years and they sound really nice. There's no need to get some huge loud amplifier. If you're just learning, uh, that's something you can get down the road when you join a band. But at first a practice amp is fine. There's some really good brands out there. Line six is a good uh, practice amp. Uh, I believe Fender makes a practice amp called the Mustang that I like. Uh, Marshall makes a few. So uh, you can, you know, really you can't go wrong. Just just have someone plug into it at the music store and play through it and, and you know, have them explain the options. Some of them have different effects and things like that. Uh, but, yeah, for $100 or less, you can get a practice amp that's not too bad. Um, and a lot of people ask, you know, what's the difference in price between electric and acoustic? Is electric much more expensive? And the answer is not really. It's it's true that you do have to buy an amplifier uh, to go along with the electric, and with an acoustic, you don't have to buy that. However, it's like I said, you're talking fifty dollars for a practice amp, so not much difference in price when all is said and done. Not really. Um, so e either choice is going to be fine. Now, um, let's talk about a little bit about lessons and about the studio. Um, I used to teach at some guitar stores around town. And uh, I've been teaching for a very long time, but Sound Theory Studio is, is young. The, the business itself started early 2014. And, uh, but before that, I would teach at some guitar stores. And what I found is there's a lot of nice people there, and they're generally run by good people, and, and it's, it's, an, it's not a bad environment. But what I wasn't satisfied with is the size of the rooms are usually very small for teaching. Um, so small, in fact, that sometimes there was just enough room for me and the student to sit facing each other and our, our knees would be touching almost. I mean, that's how small the rooms would be. And in some cases, you'd have, you know, drum lessons right across the hall and you couldn't hardly hear yourself trying to talk. And uh, it, it just wasn't a good environment to teach in. It wasn't what I was looking for as a teacher at all. Um, so I eventually decided, well, I'll just start my own business and get a really nice, spacious room to teach in that's quiet, that has a lot of learning technology in it. And I'm this is Sound Theory Studio here. And, uh, you know, you can only see part of it from this angle. But, you know, I've got a, a nice bit of equipment. It's very quiet. As you can see, it's spacious. There's plenty of room. Uh, and uh, that's what I was really looking for uh, for my guitar lessons. And it's really important to me is to have learning technology as well. I don't like guitar lessons where it's just the teacher and the student and the teacher plays some things and the student repeats it and, you know, and then that's it. It's really important to me that we, we play to backing tracks, which are basically uh, musical scores on the computer. And then we can actually play to them as, as though we were in a band. That kind of experience is really important. Um, I have a large TV screen here um, for showing fretboard diagrams and teaching music theory. Um, and all this learning technology really comes in handy and it makes the lessons much more in depth. And it's really the kind of thing you can't find, uh, at 90 some percent of, uh, music stores. They just don't have that kind of room or that kind of equipment. Um, and it was really important to me to be able to offer that. Another thing I offer to students through the studio that's really helpful is every student gets their own website. Now, what that means is if you're, uh, the student yourself and you're, you're not the parent, what you do is you go into the, your own website, you log in, and you can see your upcoming schedule, you can see uh, balance due, you can pay your bill, things like that. But the most important thing is you can log your practice times. And that's really, really nice because if you log your practice times, it's like keeping a journal and you can see uh, progress over time. And it actually will show you bar graphs of how many minutes you're spending every week or every day uh, practicing. And so it's a really nice motivator. And one of the really nice features about it is when you record a practice you can take notes and i can see those notes and respond to them so let's say you're practicing playing a chord and it sounds not good you're just having a lot of trouble holding it down right and it's just there's a lot of you know dead strings as you try to play it so if you describe that in your uh, comments, not only will I be prepared in the next lesson to talk about it, but I'll likely respond to that comment between lessons with some advice about how to hold your fingers down harder, what fingers to use, things like that. 
And it's really like getting free advice between lessons. And uh, that kind of leads me to the other thing about Sound Theory Studio that I really was looking for when I started this business was I didn't want guitar lessons with me to feel like regular guitar lessons. I wanted it to feel like going to a school. And what I mean by that is most guitar lessons you show up and, uh, you know, you, you talk with your teacher for a half hour or an hour, however long your lesson is. And then it's like, okay, bye. See you in a couple weeks. And that's it. You, you leave and that's the end of it until I see you again. And I didn't like that. I, I've never wanted to be that kind of teacher. I want it to be like a school and the students, you know, we have interaction between lessons uh, and it's not just, you know, I'll see you in a couple of weeks and then forget about you until I see you again. That's not, that's not the way I wanted to operate. So it's the nice thing about the website is it allows us to communicate with each other between lessons. It allows me to see what you're working on and how it's going. Um, you, you know, l students often ask me for advice through the, uh, the music journal that they're keeping and I respond to it usually within a day. And uh, it makes it feel much more like a school, like it's this ongoing process and not just like an appointment you have every couple of weeks or once a month or once a week. It's, it's, a, it's like a school atmosphere. And uh, people seem to really appreciate that. And I, I like teaching that way. And I think people learn much faster when it's that kind of in-depth atmosphere. Um, because ultimately, I want you to be a really great guitarist. I love teaching. I, I'm really not doing this because, you know... I want to make a ton of money or because of, uh, you know, all the other reasons that te people sometimes teach. Really, my main motivation to teach is because I love teaching. There's nothing in the world better to me than seeing someone's face light up because they understood a concept finally. Or they were able to play a challenging song for the first time. That kind, that joy you can see in them and that excitement, is, is I live for that. It's, it's just great. It reminds me of the excitement I have when I learn something and it's just so much fun. And, you know, I don't really have any interest in just, you know, phoning it in and, and having a lesson that lasts 30 minutes and we just go over a few things and it's like, okay, I'll see you later. You know, I want this to, I want my students and I to be friends and it feels like a family and it feels like a real class college kind of setting. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I keep my student population at a certain level because I never want it to get so high that uh, I can't give everyone that kind of attention. I would much rather have, you know, 30 students and uh, be able to, to have a good relationship with them and, and communicate positively on a regular basis than I would have 100 students and I can't remember their names. That's not for me. That's not the way I want to teach at all. So uh, that's, that's kind of my uh, idea behind this business, and it's worked out very well. I enjoy it, and the students seem to really enjoy it. And uh, so far, I've, it's, it's been a great experience for everyone involved, I think. Um, now, a little bit about the lessons and how they work. I teach music theory and technique. It's very important to me to teach both. Um, I've met so many guitarists out there that can play flashy riffs and uh, play fast and, and play exciting-looking things but they don't know what they're doing. They couldn't tell you what notes they're playing. They couldn't tell you what key they're in. They, they don't know what the scale is that they're doing. They, they, they just, you know, I, I guess they either did it by ear or maybe they are imitating another guitarist they saw and uh, nothing wrong with that. But I, to me, it's all kind of pointless if you don't understand why you're doing it and what it all means. Uh, and so it's really important to me to teach music theory and technique. I want my, my uh, students to not only be good guitarists with their technical playing, I want them to understand music. And that's where the music theory comes in. Now, uh, a quick note about music theory. It's another one of those myths I want to get rid of. It's uh, very intimidating to a lot of people. And I can understand why, because, you know, there's a lot of terms and vocabulary in uh, music theory. And uh, a lot of it sounds like a different language. People start talking about quarter notes and half notes and dotted eighth notes and things like that. And then they start talking about mode names, Lydian, Phrygian, Dorian, and all, all these other things and chord types, major sevenths, minor seven, flat five, all this other stuff. And it almost sounds like a different language to some people and they hear that and they're just like, I don't know, you know, I don't know what in the world you're talking about. And <laughs> it just sounds really complicated. And I think it keeps a lot of people from wanting to ever learn it. 
Well, the, that's the myth is that it's difficult and it's, it's uh, complex and you can't do it. It is a little complex, but it's, it's completely doable for anyone. It, it, so long as you take it one step at a time and you have a good teacher, it's totally doable. And I have a lot of students come here that have been playing guitar for years and years and years, and they're really quite good. But they don't know a lot about music theory, and I have a lot of students that, that come here just for the music theory, uh, because it's, it really opens doors for you. It's you know the old saying, "Knowledge is power." It, it couldn't be more true when it comes to guitar. If I had to choose between having wonderful technique and being able to play fast, complicated things, or knowing music theory and how everything works and why, I would choose music theory every day of the week. I mean, ideally you want both, of course, but if I had to choose between the two, it'd be the music theory. I don't see any re point in being able to play fast and, and have finger dexterity and things like that if you have no idea what you're doing and why you're doing it and why it works and why certain notes sound good and why certain notes don't. To just be blindly going through it uh, is, is no way to go to me. And, and it's amazing after you learn music theory, how much better of a guitar player you become. People think that, you know, while you're doing a studying and learning these concepts, it doesn't really have a whole lot to do when it comes to actually playing. And that's not true. That's not true. So imagine uh, someone comes over to your house, a, a guitarist that's a friend of yours, say, and they're, they're like, you know, let's, let's play a song together. Let's write something. So they play a C, and then an F, and then a G. So. Okay, so that's a really simple chord progression, and uh, but they said, you know, why don't you do some melodies over it? Why don't you improvise over it a little bit? See what you come up with, and you kind of look at them, and it's like, wouldn't even have any idea where to start. I mean, a lot of people, what they do in that situation is they just kind of start hitting random notes. And they try to find something that sounds good over those chords. And then after they find a few notes that sound okay, they kind of start using their ear to try to put something together. And some people are pretty good at doing that. But what's always been interesting to me is when you're just kind of hunting for good notes using your ear, well, all you're really doing is trying to find a scale that works. So why not just learn the scales and save yourself a whole lot of time, right? So if you can identify that chord progression, C, F, and G, as being what's called a 1-4-5 chord progression in the key of C, then you know a few options to use to solo over it. One would be C major, right? Or C pentatonic. And there's all kinds of options, actually, all kinds of things you could do over that. But to, to have the knowledge allowed me to go directly to the notes that sound good over that with with complete confidence that there will not be any bad notes at all because I know the theory and I understand it and that's a huge huge deal so um, you can expect in your guitar lessons to learn about music and it's a lot of fun and it's not overly complicated especially when taken out a step a step at a time I really think anyone can do it I have students learning uh, theory that are eight years old I have students learning theory that are 60 um, and I've taught in the past students that were younger than that and older than that, and they all did very, very well. So don't let theory uh, scare you. Another thing you get as a student is I give everyone a free copy of my book. I wrote a book on music theory uh, a couple of years ago. It's called Guitar Theory, and uh, it takes you from the beginning step by step, uh, assuming that you know nothing about guitar or nothing about music theory, I should say. And uh, takes you through it step by step, all the way to more complex, you know, modes and things like that. And uh, it's a nice companion to your lessons. I don't teach directly out of the book, but what I, the way I teach is very closely to the book. And so the book is a really nice guide to have at home, you know, to help you with your lessons. Um, and the last thing I'd like to talk about is just setting goals and being prepared to practice. Um, you do want to set you want to figure out what it is you want on a guitar. Do you want to be a virtuoso? Do you want to be a, a great guitarist? Or do you just want to be able to strum some chords and play some simple songs? Nothing wrong with either, but you think about your goals. Think about what you want out of it, and then be prepared to put the time into it. I think all of you could be either uh, someone sitting on the front porch playing some simple songs or a virtuoso. 
uh, I think all of you would be capable of that. The only difference between the two is the amount of time you'd have to put into it is very different to be a virtuoso than it is to play some simple songs. So, uh, but you know, you can be a good guitar player all the same, regardless of which one you choose or anywhere in between. Uh, and when it comes to practice, be prepared to practice. Um, ideally it's nice to practice at least three times a week for an hour each time, uh, more if you can, but the, you know, that three times a week at an hour is pretty good. Some people don't have that much time. Some people have a lot more time. Uh, but you know, if, if you have a, if you don't have much time, that doesn't mean you can't learn guitar. What it means is you need to use the little time you have the best way you can make sure your practice is very well spent and that's another thing that I teach very heavily here is how to practice it's almost like practicing to practice because practice is an art form in itself and a lot of guitar players I think waste a lot of time when they practice uh, and you need to have a structured practice knowing exactly what you're doing and the best thing to work on to help you get faster quickly and uh, to give you a good example I have a student who's been playing for about a year, uh, taking lessons from me for about a year. And after one year, he is as good as I was probably five years in. And the reason is because I tried to teach myself at the beginning. And uh, he's taking lessons. And that's the difference. I mean, he shaved four years off of his progress by taking lessons, where as I took a full five years to get to his level, because I was trying to learn on the internet, you know, by talking to other guitarists and getting anything I could out of them during little jam sessions, but it was nothing structured. And uh, if I have any regret, it was that I didn't get lessons sooner and I didn't take it seriously sooner as far as, as learning, as far as the learning goes, I should have taken it much more seriously. Um, but, you know, it all worked out well and going to Berkeley, uh, you know, made all the difference in the world and made up for all that lost time and then some. But, uh, you know, having a teacher is, is really what it's all about. I can't recommend it enough. And there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, you know, I'm self-taught and I don't need to get lessons. And, you know, that's fine if that's the way they want to do it. But I'm telling you right now, with a teacher, you're going to progress 10 times faster. I mean, it's just it's just a huge, huge difference. So. Anyway, so that's a nice little introduction about myself, about the studio, um, about guitar. And I hope that uh, I've piqued your interest and I hope that you're uh, ready to start your lessons. It's a lot of fun and uh, I have a lot of, a lot of fun with my students. And we, we kind of feel like a family here and uh, it's, it's a really good time. And so I'm looking forward to meeting you and talking to you. Uh, just go to the contact page at the top of the website. Um, you'll see there that there's a short uh, kind of application to fill out. The application is, is very simple. It's just multiple choice. And it's not a screening tool. I don't uh, pick and choose people by what they say on the application. It's, its sole purpose is for me to learn more about you and know where you are as a guitar player so that I you know, know what I can offer you and I know where to start teaching for you. Um, so if you can fill that out, it's much appreciated. It helps quite a bit and uh, makes your lessons more productive for me to have that information. So. Um, yeah, head to the contact page now. Check out the application. If you have any uh, just general questions for me, the phone number is also on the contact page. And also there's a small form you can use just to send me a general question through email. And I'll get back to you, you know, usually within 24 hours. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, take care. And I hope to talk to you soon. And, um, yeah, can't wait to play guitar with you. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs>